What's up Wisdom in Christ? Today we're gonna be looking for mushrooms on the mountain. I found my first one here and it's gonna be a really good time so today's just a little mushroom foraging adventure. We're gonna look for a couple different kinds. King Belit, Golden Chanterelle, those, those are the best ones to eat and really just enjoy nature. It's beautiful up here and do a little mushroom foraging. So let's get right into it. Well, I started to drive away and the first thing I saw when I was driving away is another mushroom here. You can see a couple of them here. One starting to pop up through the, the pine needles and then there's a whole bunch of little mushrooms right here too. But this one looks really nice. We've got this golden cap with this white ring around it. And then you can see this bigger one kind of in this oval shape, but this one's a perfect circle. So we'll just pull this one at the base here, clean it off a little bit here, and I'll get my brush out a little later, because generally we want to brush them off. So we found our first one, or second one for the, for the day, different species. Just a little spiritual thought that I was having for you guys today. It's really important to come prepared to these types of things. Mushroom foraging, I'm up here in a lot of really, really thick woods. I have a few lumber trails that I know where they go, but this is a place where you can easily get lost. So you wanna be prepared when you go mushroom foraging. For instance, I have my compass with me. I have my ham radio. I'm a licensed ham radio operator. So I can use this to reach certain repeaters in order to contact people if I need. I let people know exactly where I was going and a rough time frame on when I would be home. So this way I'm protected, right? And this is a really good thing to do in our spiritual lives as well. We need to have our compass, right? We have to have the Holy Ghost, the Word of God to help guide us where we're going so we don't get lost. I have been lost up here two different times. Found my way both times without a lot of a lot of concern, but there was a moment there where you're like, wow, I'm lost. And one of the times I was up here, I was alone. So that made it even a little bit crazier, right? You're up here alone. And so yeah, I brought a little food, a little water, my radios, and let people know where I'm going. So that's the same thing that we need to do in our spiritual lives. We need to be prepared. We need to have a plan for where we're going, which is hopefully back home with our Father in heaven. And we need to follow the guidelines that are required to get there, right? And then when we steer off course, we need to use that compass to get us back on course and make it where we're trying to go. So that's just my little thought <laughs> for you guys today. So yeah, let's get looking for some more mushrooms. We, we see this little cluster here. When I pull this up, you can see that this mushroom has kind of on the, if you look at it from its side, it kind of looks like a funnel, right? If you look down in its gills, you can see that, that its gills connect to, to the stem. So the gills go all the way down and connect to the stem. And I'm pretty sure these are false gills. I'm not sure. I can't remember if the golden chanterelle has false gills or if it has real gills, but I do know for 100% fact that this is a golden chanterelle mushroom. This is one I pick up here often and one that I love eating. It tastes amazing, you guys. So what I'll do is I'll cut the little dirt off here. I'll clean the pine needles off of it and I'll pick all the other ones that I'm seeing right here, put them in my little bags here and I'm definitely gonna be cooking these up and eating them. So I'm not exactly sure what this one is. So whenever you're picking mushrooms, this kind of goes without saying, obviously don't eat anything unless you're 100% sure what it is. There are some lookalikes, even with those golden chanterelles I was just picking, there's a lookalike, but I know the difference between the lookalike and the, the golden chanterelle. So you just need to know what you're doing. It's best if you have a guide or somebody that knows what he's doing, that's eating the mushroom that you guys are looking for, that can tell you what it is. And that is also true with the gospel. 
If you don't have a knowledge of the truth, if you don't know what sin is, what's right and what's wrong, you might end up accidentally picking the wrong mushroom, so to speak. Some of them can cause extreme discomfort and some of them are even deadly. And so that's the same thing with our spiritual lives. We need to know what sin is, what's right, what's wrong, and be able to identify that, to see that, so we can pick the yummy, good tasting mushrooms and eat those and avoid the ones that could cause stomach cramps and even death. So yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> something to think about. So from a, from a distance, I thought that these were more golden chanterelles. But when I look up close, these are definitely something different than a golden chanterelle. It looks like a little golden coral coming out, like, like a little golden coral from the water. So I don't know what these are. I haven't spent a lot of time identifying the kind of coral looking mushrooms. It's pretty and, and neat. It's really cool looking. So I'll probably pick one of them, clean it off and take it home. For the ones I don't know, there's really no reason for me to pick every one that I don't know. I'll just pick one of them when I find one I don't know, go home and identify it to the best of my abilities, document it on my phone, and then pretty much just, you know, go from there. There's no reason to pick them all. I just pick the ones that I know for sure I'm going to eat. Also in this little spot where I'm at right here, there's a lot of different kinds of mushrooms you can see. This one is a pretty neat looking mushroom. And then we got another mushroom right here. You can see. And then we've got another mushroom right here under this log. It's pretty, pretty looking red, almost reddish brown. Then we've got another mushroom right here under this log. And then, and these are all different kinds, every single one of these. We've got another mushroom right here, different kind, a little cluster of that same kind that's right here and we've got another mushroom right here under this tree and that one actually might be one that I'm looking for so I'm going to check that out right now and see what it is because this might be one of the kinds that I look for. It's right next down to the bottom of this pine tree it looks like it's an Amanita mushroom. Now, some of the ones in the Amanita family are not something that you want to be picking and eating. They are deadly. Some in Amanita family are edible. My guess would be that this is an Amanita aprica, also known as sunshine Amanita, that's really old so you can't see the color in it. But I could be wrong. I'm not going to keep it. I see a lot of spores coming out the bottom. It's really old. So I'm just going to leave it here. But hopefully I can find some more that are younger that have the nice color that I'm looking for. If you'll notice I got two bags here. One for the mushrooms that I don't know what they are. And one for the mushrooms that I do. I just don't want to mix them because if a little piece of one of them falls off into the ones that I am eating and then I'm cleaning them, you know, you might accidentally eat a little piece of a mushroom of one you don't know. So I just do that to help avoid doing that. Now, if you come over here, I didn't know what this was. I was wondering, I was like, what? It kind of looks like a King Belit. So I started to pick it, but I was kind of picking it too quickly and the cap popped off of the stem. So usually if you're picking mushrooms, you wanna get your fingers down as low as you can and pick at the base of the stem. Have your brush ready to clean it off it's, if it's one you wanna eat. And then if it's, you know, one you don't wanna eat, you still wanna clean it off because you wanna be able to, to, uh, to identify it later. But this is in fact a king belete. This is the stem and it, it's, these are some good tasting mushrooms, probably right up there 
with some of the best mushrooms I've ever had in my entire life as far as flavor goes. And there's a little one right here. So I'm gonna pick this one and show it to you because this one, I didn't break the cap off. You can see that's a baby King Bolete. And these are amazing tasting mushrooms. They taste so good. Between King Bolete and, King, and uh, Golden Chanterelle, it's hard for me to choose. Those are probably some of the best tasting two kinds of mushrooms I personally eat from the wild out here. All right, so this right here is an Amanita Aprica, also known as Sunshine Amanita. Either that or an Amanita Muscaria yellow variation. And either way, this mushroom is super cool. They're yellow. They're very, very, very yellow top. You can see they've got these warts on top of it. So this one is really, really neat. It's a beautiful mushroom. You can tell it has this bulb on the bottom here, followed by a veil that's created when the mushroom pops up out of the bulb because it starts in a little bulb. This real, real yellow top. So this is definitely an awesome mushroom. And so yeah, this mushroom is really cool and definitely one that I really, really enjoy finding up here on the mountain. It's a beautiful, beautiful mushroom. Now this is what I was looking for. You remember those golden chanterelles that I started finding at the start? I just found a whole bunch of them right here. And then if you look over, there's another patch of them right here. And another patch right here. And these are all pretty big. So they're about the perfect maturity and they're in really, really good condition. And these, these mushrooms taste amazing. So I'm gonna take probably 10, 15 minutes here, pick every single one, clean them off and put them in my bag because that is a score. And this crazy mushroom right here was picking golden chanterelles and I look down and I see this. This thing is huge. It's bigger than my hand, and I have huge hands. It is awesome. Then we've got a little baby one, another one right here. Then we've got some different kind of mushroom over here. There is just mushrooms everywhere out here. All colors, all sizes. It's just super cool right now, you guys. I'm having a lot of fun. My camera battery died, so I got to use my phone battery. I think it must have got cold, but... I just found a King Belit that's the size of my hand. Oh man, this thing looks yummy. Oh, look at that. That's quite the King Belit. This is gonna feed, certainly it's gonna feed me and anybody else that wants to eat some with me, I might share with family or friends. This is a yummy mushroom. This is the same as those little baby ones that we were finding, only a huge, huge, huge version. Okay, now we're really getting into the mushroom spots. This is a monster King Belit. Look, it's almost as big as my head. It's a little older, but I'm still gonna eat it, cut out the parts that I don't wanna eat. It's mostly perfectly good, so, mmm. And then there's more Belits over there. I'm gonna pick it. Um, it's this one right here. This one's in perfect condition, perfect age. I'm really starting to find the Belites out here. So hopefully I can find some more of the other kinds that I really want to find. Whoa, a purple mushroom. That is so beautiful. Let's see what it looks like on the underside. I haven't seen a lot that look like this. Oh, wow. It's all the way purple on both sides. That is one pretty mushroom. Wow, that's a pretty mushroom, you guys. Well, what an awesome day mushroom hunting. I found two really, really good tasting mushrooms, King Belites and Golden Chanterelle. I also found a whole bunch of different kinds that I haven't really seen before. And I... <laughs> filled up one full bag completely full of the edible kinds that I like to eat. So it's been really fun. Stay tuned to see all of the mushrooms that I picked and a little bit about how I personally prepare them.
All right, so I'm back and I've got all of my mushrooms laid out here on the table and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the haul had quite the run today. So here are all of the golden chanterelles. You can see that I've got quite a pretty big pile here. They're pretty clean and I am super excited to eat these. Now I talked about a little bit how I was gonna say how I make, how I cook these. So personally with the golden chanterelle, I like to eat these quickly. I've never dried them before. So I just take them and saute them in butter. Just a little bit of salt and sometimes a little bit of oregano. If I'm with my friend, he usually helps me cook them and we do with oregano and that's really good. But it's pretty simple. They taste really, really good sauteed. This is a very, very choice edibility mushroom. Now this is the King Belit array. You can see we've got the baby bleat. Some of these are just caps because their stems fell off. But you can see we've got a whole bunch of king bleats here. These are all in prime condition. Very few of them even have worms except these two big ones. They have some worms. But this is a lot of king bleat. And I'm very excited to eat these. And you can see how big. Some of these are. This is like as big as my head almost. <laughs> it's a pretty big mushroom. <laughs> so that is amazing. You can see the big and then the little baby, little baby, baby bleat here. It's cool to see the size between those. And then here's like a real, real good middle sized bleat. And these ones have this real tough, tough bottom. They've got a real golden top. They don't have gills, they just have basically like a real smooth smooth spot where the gills would be. There is tiny, tiny little holes in it. And as they get bigger, it can kind of change colors a little bit. And those holes just get a little bit bigger here on the underneath. And if you cut it open, there's gills. Here, I'll just show you here. So if I take this one, for example, or I'll just show you the back side because this one's broke off. You can see right here on the back side of this, there's actually, it looks kind of like gills, right? But you can't see the gills from the bottom. It's just if you cut it open, then you can see the gills. So that's, that helps you identify the bleats. So these are all the edible mushrooms. For the bleats, I will take this food dehydrator right here. I'll chop them up, slice them up, and then dehydrate them, put them in a freezer, and they can stay good for a really, really long time. They taste really good, so quite a few of them, I'll keep fresh and eat those ones as well. But I'd say this was a pretty good little haul. And then we've got these miscellaneous ones that I'm gonna run through. My Mushroom AI, I've got an app on my phone that it's an AI, it's pretty accurate. And then I'll post them on my Mushroom identification forms as well. And look in my Mushroom Field Guide to kind of help identify what these ones are. Um, and this was that Amanita that I found. This one, I put toilet paper around it to try to keep it from breaking up. And then it just stuck to the top. So all the warts are gone off the top. You can see this nice yellow color that it has. So this is some type of yellow variation of the Amanita mushroom. But when I pulled that toilet paper off the top, it ripped off the skin. Well, it peeled off the skin actually and peeling off the skin took the warts off the top. But in the video, you can see the warts on the top in that shot that I took of that one. So yeah, pretty awesome time mushroom foraging today. I hope you enjoyed the little vlog and the video. And I look forward to making more videos like this. I don't know how much of the season there is left, but I'm gonna cook up some mushrooms and eat some and dry some. And I hope you enjoyed tuning in and I will see you in future videos. As always, peace be unto you.